Yo, check it. This is going to be a quick one. We just going to read, read through some real quick, but again, still on our Hue Hue Tlapalan tip, you dig? This going to be Kumura Revisited, okay? And this is by uh, Charles Augustus Shook. Now, it's Kumura Revisited or the Book of Mormon and the claims of the Mormons re-examined from the viewpoint of American archaeology and ethnology by Charles A. Shook, okay? Says it was done in 1910, all right? We got to get over here to page 119 where I'm going to read from. Okay, so we're going to start right here. It's going to be the, the Central Americans and Mexicans. Let's see, zoom in a little bit. Central America and Mexico were the seats of two distinct and semi-civilized peoples, the Mayas and the Nahuals. See how they did that semi-civilized? Bro, the greatest in the world. What are you talking about? Of these, the former were the more ancient and cultured, the latter the more recent and widespread. So we have a clear distinction, of course, knowing that the Nahuas, the monuments, hieroglyphics, and languages of these people show marked diversities, but some of the myths and their calendar systems show close resemblances. In the valley of the Usuma Sita, in Central America, tradition says there once existed a mighty Maya or Golhua Empire known as Xipalba or the Empire of Shanes or Serpents, whose attributed founder was Votan, who is said to have come from the land of shadow beyond the seas. Just where his home was, no one can tell, but all sorts of conjectures are rife. Brazier de Baberg supposed it to have been in South America over the Caribbean Sea and identified him and his followers with the fling Atlantis. Some of the Spanish missionaries, determined to bend every tradition to make it harmonize with their theories, placed it in the old world, to which they claimed he made four visits, during which he saw the ruins of the Tower of Babel and Sol Solomon's Temple. The Chiapanese are said to have called him the grandson of that respectable old man that built the great ark. In short, says of this tradition, quote, the tradition of Votan, the founder of Maya culture, though somewhat warped, probably by having passed through priestly hands, is nevertheless one of the most valuable pieces of information which we have concerning the ancient Americans. Without it, our knowledge of the Mayas would be hopeless, blank, and the ruins of Palenque would be more a mystery than ever, unquote. North Americans of Antiquity, page 204. In Central America, Votan is said to have found tribes of the lowest degree of culture who had preceded him in the occupancy of the country. They are mentioned in the old traditions as the Chichim Chichimex and are said to have lived entirely by the chase. Votan apportioned the land among his followers who were known as Zequeles, men with petticoats, taught the savage Chichimex the art of cooking their food and instituted among them the arts of civilized life. According to Quiche chronology, the empire of Xipalba was founded in 955 BC. Its capital is known in tradition as Nachan, which is almost universally conceded to be Palinque. Quote, Nachan, or the town of serpents, of which the ruins of Palinque exhibit the grandeur, was their capital, unquote. Nadalia, Nad, Nadilak, page 263. Then Nachan is unquestionably identified with Palenque, short, page 205. Quote, it is more than probable that Palenque was the capital, as Ortanes believes the Nachan of the Votanic Epoch, unquote, Bancroft, volume 5, page 169. This, however, is disputed by the Charnay and Thomas, who regard Pelinque as having been a religious rather than a civil center. The empire grew so rapidly that three tributary monarchies were founded with capitals at Tulan in Chiapas, Mayapan in Yucatan, and Coban in Honduras, and the whole central region came under the sway of the scepters of the Votonic monarchs. But after a number of centuries of progress, this empire began to decline, probably through internal revolts, and fell an easy prey to the victorious Nahuals who had come down from the north. Bancroft, 
Ban Bancroft remarks, quote, The result was only a change of dynasty accompanied by the introduction of some new features in government and religious rights. The old civilization was merged in a new way and practically lost its identity, so much so that all the many nationalities that in later times traced their origin to the central region were proud, whatever their language, to claim relationship with the successful Nahuals, who institutions they had adopted and whose power they had shared, unquote. Native Races, Volume 5, page 234. From the valley of the Usumacinta, colonies went out in several directions to people the surrounding country. Some went to Guatemala, where their descendants are known still as the Gachigals and Quiches. After the 11th century, century Quiche civilization was modified by Toltec contact in the region where they are located presents two different sets of ruins, an older and one more recent. The first evidently built by the direct descendants of the founders of Xibalba, the latter by those descendants after coming in contact with foreign influences and receiving infusions of foreign blood. Those who settled Yucatan are known as the Mayas, even to the present day. They reached their golden age about a century before the invasion of Cortes, but were followed by a defeat and their kingdom was broken up into a number of petty states. So tenaciously have they clung to their ancient language that in many localities is still spoken in its original purity and the sons of the conquerors in some instances have forgotten their Castilian and have adopted entirely the tongue of the sons of the conquered. The Tzenzals, or Totzils, also claim to be direct descendants of the builders of Palinque, the Nahuals, the second people to exert an influence and establish a civilization in Mexico and Central America, came into these countries from the north or northwest. Probably both. The ancient American races preserved the tradition of distinct migrations in their hieroglyphs and pictographs. According to these traditions, it was from that from a country situated to the north or the northwest that the Nahuas came. Unquote. Prehistoric America, page two, 272. It is very evident that Nahuatl immigrations continued from the north during the considerable period of time beginning with their first appearance as a rival of Xibalba, and, if tradition is to be believed, not ending until the evasion of Mexico by the Aztecs and kindred tribes as late as 300 years before the conquest. Now, little is known about the early history of the Nahuals in Central America. Bancroft says, quote, The Nahual power grew up side by side with its Xibalban predecessor, having its capital Tulan apparently in Chiapas. Unquote. Native Races, Volume 5, page 233. There are also good reasons for believing that at first this people were content to dwell quietly and peaceably in the Usumacinta region, and that hostilities were not provoked until after they had succeeded in bringing under their influence a number of wild tribes who, reduced to a life of civilization, joined their standard in the struggle to overthrow the Votanic monarchs. After the fall of Xibalba, but little is heard of the Nahua people and their government for a number of centuries, except that at some time prior to the 5th century, a struggle occurred, following which there was a general scattering of the tribes. We have now reached the 6th century, when traditions begin to assume more of the aspect of historical fact. Bancroft states, quote, as has been stated, the 6th century is the most remote period to which we are carried in the annals of Anahuac by tradition sufficiently definite to be considered in a strict sense as historic records." Unquote. Native Races, Volume 5, page 157. With this century, we have the advent of the Toltecs into Mexico. They were a Nahuan tribe, and the most prominent representative of that people's culture of which we have any record. The unanimous testimony of tradition is that they came from the north from the mysterious Hue Hue Tlapalan, old, old red land, the nursery of the Nahua people, which has been variously located. Bright locates it near Blake Tulare in California, Becker on the Rio Colorado, and Baldwin, Short, and Foster in the Mississippi Valley. But Bancroft, on the contrary, attempts to find this country in the Usumacita, region and supposes that the Toltecs were a fragment of that people which overthrew Xibalba. Notwithstanding his views, however, he admits the prevalence of a tradition that the Toltecs came from the north among the Aztecs when the Spaniards first came in contact with them. Quote, 
It is not probable, he says, that this idea of the northern origin was a pure invention of the Spaniards. They doubtless found among the Aztecs with whom they came in contact what seemed to them as prevalent popular notion that the ancestors of the race came from the north. Unquote. Native Races, Volume 5, page 217. Baldwin and Foster in their works, quote, Ancient America and Prehistoric Races of the United States begin the Toltec period to Mexico at about 1000 BC instead of the 6th century AD, confounding the date of their rise with the traditional date of the founding of Palenque and possibly themselves with the Nahual tribes who had preceded them. Among those who have dated the beginning of the Toltec supremacy in Mexico from the 6th or 7th century AD are Claviero, Gallatin, Humboldt, Prescott, Squire, Morton, Nort, and Gledon, Bancroft, Short, Bradford, Stevens, Charnay, Nadilac, and Thomas. This latter view is more consistent with the probabilities, for the theory is now generally accepted that 1,500 years are sufficient to cover the building of all those cities of both Central America and Mexico whose ruins still remain. So you see what they say? So we took a general consensus. consensus. I'm going to stop for one second and talk about that general consensus when it came to that virus. There was a general consensus that everybody needed to get it. But that wasn't the case. And this is how the best way I can kind of relate it in most modern times of how just because there's a general consensus of we want this to be what we want it to be so that it fits is not always the case. There's plenty of other writings that contradict exactly what they're stating right here. Or at least what those people are putting forth, saying only 1,500 years is sufficient to account for the building of everything. They ain't even dug deep into understanding how deep the civilizations even go, one upon another. <laughs> the soil accumulation, geological evidence, right, shows more than 1,500 years in itself. Continuing on, Brenton denies that the Toltecs, as they are commonly described, ever existed. <laughs> He says, quote, the Toltecs may have been one of the early and unimportant uh, gents of the Azteca, but even this is doubtful. The term was properly applied to the inhabitants of a small town of Tula, north of the Valley of Mexico, unquote, the American race, page 129. Elsewhere, he says of them, quote, one of their Nahuas, small bands, the Toltecs, became invested in later legends with the halo of heroes and magicians, and were mythically represented as the founders of that civilization which it is probable they largely borrowed and germ from tribes in the south of Mexico. Such as it was, they readily assimilated and increased it, and their distant colonies in Nicaragua and Costa Rica carried it with them to these remote points." Unquote. Myths of the New World, page 42. And that one right there just, he seems like he a hijack all the way. It is possible that the Nahual tribes from the north, with a degree of culture but little above that of the Chata Muskoki tribes, but with progressive dispositions, coming in contact with the Maya civilization in Central America enhanced their own culture and developed it with a number of resemblances to the Mayan, but in a different channel. And that of the Toltecs did not originate all of the features of the civilization commonly ascribed to them, but infusing new life into that which had been derived in part from Xibalba or its fragments by the Nahua tribes who had preceded them, developed it into that enjoyed by the people of Anahuac between the 6th and 11th centuries of our era. Stevens and Charnay go to the opposite extreme of denying any culture in Central America at all but the Toltecum. Their theory is that the cities commonly ascribed to the ancient Mayas were built by that people after their career in Mexico. Charnay says, quote, granted their building genius, seeing that both the architecture and the decorations of the edifices correspond to the descriptions left by historians respecting Toltec palaces and temples of the uplands. We are in a position to affirm that there was no other civilization in Central America except the Toltec civilization, and that if another existed, our having met with no trace of it gives us the right to deny it altogether, unquote. The ancient cities of the New World, page 273. The Toltecs ruled in Mexico for 500 years the, in the 11th century when they were overcome by the Chichimecs, a people of the same Nahual stock. The Toltec Empire was ruled by a confederacy of three cities, Colhuacan, Otompan, and Tolan, each having its turn as the leading power. 
the last being renowned for its culture and splendor, the first surviving in name the subsequent changes to the conquest. On the nature of the Toltec overthrow, Bancroft remarks, quote, the Toltec downfall was the overthrow of a dynasty, not the destruction of a people, unquote. Native Races, Volume 5, page 288. After their fall, the great mass of the Toltec people quietly submitted to their successors, while the nobles with their followers fled southward, taking a refuge among the Mistecs and Zapotecs of Oyaka, and influencing the culture of the Quechés of Guatemala. The Chichimecs were in turn overcome by the Aztecs, who continued their rule to the invasion of Cortes and the fall of Montezuma. This, in brief, is the outline of the ancient history of the Central America and Mexico taken from the traditions of those countries with the opinions and explanations of modern writers included. It is not at all unlikely that much that is recorded is a statement of fact and truly historical while much is purely mythical. See you on the next one.